Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a Malifaux miniature called Hay Ridden from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming who sent me the miniature out for review. If you check the description box down below you'll find a link to their web store and this link greatly helps my YouTube channel anytime you purchase anything from them. So please use that link if you do decide to purchase anything from Goblin Gaming. I've got to be ha honest guys, I'm not 100% happy with the way this miniature turned out. Now I'm really happy with how the cloaks turned out, but not so much with the red flesh. It definitely is quite a, a stark contrasting colour and it could have done with some more subtle colour transitions and maybe another hour's worth of painting. But anyway, I hope you like it in the condition that it is at and you pick up a few tips and tricks al along the way. This, as always guys, is a long video, so go grab yourselves a nice hot drink, or maybe a nice ice cold beer, and we'll get started with the tutorial. I'm going to start by priming the miniature using Alclad 2's lacquer primer. It's important to note that because it's a lacquer primer guys, you need to be well ventilated. I wear a mask and have a spray booth. Also, it's a hot uh, liquid and it can melt rubber seals in cheap airbrushes so make sure you're using a quality airbrush like the Awata Eclipse CS that I'm using to make sure you don't damage your tools. I'm priming at 20 psi at about 3 to 4 inches away and I'm letting the primer build up nice and slowly and I'm making sure I've got a nice even smooth white coverage. Whilst I'm priming, I want to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I recently just got a new Patreon supporter the other day. Thank you, Scott, for pledging on Patreon. And in future, every time I get a new Patreon supporter, I will be mentioning the name just as a way of saying thank you for the support that I'm getting on my Patreon channel. As you can see guys, one of the main reasons I use this lacquer primer is it goes on so thin and so smooth guys. And also being a lacquer primer it's much more tougher uh, than a standard uh, acrylic or polyurethane primer. Now I'm going to start base coating the whole miniature using Games Workshop's base paint Rhinox Hide. It's important to note guys that because it's a Games Workshop paint it's not pre-thinned obviously to go in the airbrush. So I thin it down roughly three drops of water to one drop of paint and as you can see it sprays nice and fine out the airbrush once thinned correctly. The main reason that I'm going to prime the whole miniature using the Rhinox Hide is because I'm actually going to be painting the flesh in a red tone and also uh, all the other parts of the miniature will benefit from having a darker tone like the gold areas and the cloak is obviously going to be leather colour as well. Now I'm coming in with Vallejo Game Air Leather Brown and I'm going to be using my other Awata H-Line HP CH Airbrush 
for this as it's got a smaller needle nozzle and I'm able to get some really nice fine lines. I'm working at about 15 psi here guys and I'm trying to leave all of the Rhinox hide behind in all of the recesses and create a subtle blend between the Rhinox hide and the leather brown colour. As you can see I'm building up the colour really slowly guys but even so with an airbrush uh, you can still get a really nice colour blend in minutes whereas if you was using a regular brush this would take absolutely hours using very very thin coats of paint to build up the um, colour transitions. I'm going to add more subtle highlights now using Games Workshop's layer paint Baylor Brown and as you can see on the cape I'm aiming for the extreme top surfaces of the folds of the cape to make the highlights look as natural as I possibly can. Now it's time to add some texture to the um, leather cape. I'm going to be using Games Workshop's layer paint, a shabti bone, and I'm going to be using some sponge that you get from blister packs of miniatures. I removed most of the paint on some paper towel, 
and then I'm just ever so slightly touching the surface of the cloak and I'm going to make some leather cracked uh, texture this is really simple to do guys the only thing I'll say is try not to overdo it too much chips and it can start to look like a textured mess so I'll, I'll stick to the top surface of the folds and all the extreme edges of the uh, cape or cloak I should say and it's going to leave some really nice texture behind I want to add a more warmer tone to the leather cloak and I'm going to be using Games Workshop Seraphim Sepia and I've added a little bit of water uh, to my brush so it's watered down the Seraphim Sepia and as you can see here it's going on really thinly I'm not letting it pour on the surface of the cloak only at the extreme bottom of the cloak where I want to leave staining behind Now I'm going to use Games Workshop's base paint Corn Red to paint all of the flesh areas of Hayridden. I've thinned this down in the cap of the Corn Red paint and you can see that it's going on really thin so I'll need two thin layers of paint to build up a nice solid even coverage coat. Here I'm going to use Games Workshop's base paint Mephist on Red. I'm going to paint all of the flesh areas of Hayridden using Mephist on Red, but I'm going to avoid all the extreme recesses of the red and leave the corn red behind. And you'll see we're getting a nice subtle highlighting blend 
from the corn red being darker to the Mephiston red being a brighter red in tone. I'm going to add extra highlights to Hayridden's flesh using Games Workshop's layer paint Wild Rider Red and as you can see this is a very bright ready orange tone and it's going to make the flesh pop a little more.
Hey Rudens holding a stuff and I wanted to make this uh, gold as red and gold are really complementary colours. So I painted stuff a gold using Dark Star some molten metal paint Imperial Gold. All the extreme recesses are painted using Games Workshop shade paint Curable Crimson. Now I don't wash the miniature with the uh, wash, I just place it in the extreme recesses and I'm very careful on the wings not to leave staining behind. Here I'm using Games Workshop Shade Paint Seraphine Sepia and I'm going to coat all of the scores that I painted using a Shabti Bone with the Seraphine Sepia. You could come back in afterwards with a Shabti Bone to do extreme highlights on the scores but as I was painting fairly quickly I omitted to do this. I'm also washing all of the gold areas of the staff with the seraphim sepia and I'm adding some more grub and grime to the bottom of the cape again using seraphim sepia Chainmail Silver is going to be painted onto his mask that he's wearing on half of the side of his face and also the shotgun in his hand which I absolutely love by the way.
I don't show it on camera guys but after the chainmail silver had dried I come back in with Norn Oil from Games Workshop and I wash all of the metallics. Malifaux is a great game guys and I'm pretty much in a, a bit of an addiction to it at the moment guys so you'll probably be seeing me paint more um, Malifaux miniatures over the next couple of weeks and also maybe some Infinity miniatures which I think are absolutely exquisite. I really hope you like this tutorial and you pick something up from it uh, and if you did guys let me know in the comments field down below. Lastly, I'd like to say a huge thank you once again to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming. Don't forget to check the description box down below for their web store. And thank you very much for watching this video guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.